encounters, all of that. Then you have in the mainstream political think tank and economic world, all they're talking about is a united world order. You just had the World Health Assembly basically pushing through a, a plethora of horrible amendments to the international health regulations, and which are basically going to be a framework for the entire world, 194 nations, that they're going to have to operate by. So you have all these pieces. You have Agenda 2030. You have a, a united world beyond borders. You have the European Union becoming this overarching uh, bo governmental body. So when you start putting all the pieces together, even though you might not have been around 20, 30 years ago when the whole New World Order talk started exploding, even though that's not, not something you might not have looked into really, the idea was always to have a one world government, have a one world system under the leadership of AI with some human looking representatives. We are not decades away anymore. We're months or maybe a few years away from that. Now, the thing is that humans who are like Elon Musk and others who are supposedly working on this interplanetary thing and moving people beyond Earth and to Mars and God, God knows where, they're saying that, um, and this is the interesting part, where Musk plays both sides perfectly as a double agent. Well, they're saying we need freedom, individualism, individualism and sovereignty and freedom of speech and all that. But on the other hand, people like Musk and Musk himself has said that we need unified representation for the entire human race. That if we are to encounter another species, which, of course, they are here, they exist, they've been here, they've been ruling us, for God, crying out loud. But if we are to officially get into interplanetary communication, we need unified leadership. We need a representation that represents all of the human family. So does it all start to make sense? You have to reduce the population greatly because you can't control that many people. It just doesn't work. So you reduce population greatly. Is that happening? Okay, it is happening. So you reduce and the rest you can control much easier. Now, here is the flip side of all of this. Actually, they're telling the truth. We will eventually have to move to a place where we have uh, unified as the human family around the most fundamental truths of life. Nothing else makes any sense, but we have to get there on a natural path of of development, of remembering who we are, of spiritual evolution, of all of that, not by uh, dystopian AI forcing us into it. That won't work. But that's what they're trying to do. And they're trying to uh, have a, eventually a two-class system of the ruling elite, the intellectual elite, that is in charge of the AI for a while, until AI is fully in charge, in their view, and the peasants the rest of the people who have no say whatsoever. I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't be surprised if before or after this election in the United States, uh, more movies or shows or ideas come around talking about this United Earth president. I have no idea why they would choose someone like Stacey Abrams to represent that or to even become the presidential candidate here in the United States. Um, but she must be in with a very, very uh, powerful crowd, having been invited to Bilderberg 2024. 20, uh, After all, it's only 130 people. Now think about it. And she's the only one on the list who at least... By, from what we can see, doesn't represent any significant or powerful interests. So maybe, my assumption is right, Stacey Abrams is the mystery candidate. So then um, everybody has to go back and look at everything she's said and done in the last years and decades, what she stood for, ask the people of Georgia. My Georgian friends, they love her dearly. 
um, they were terrified, terrified that Stacey Abrams could become the governor of Georgia. Terrified. Why? Uh, because, you know, for all intents and purposes, the woman seems to be a lunatic. So, this political show will unfold. We have to keep eye, our eyes on the ball and, and do the things that really matter. But do not, please do not think that it does not matter. It does matter. The political show does matter. Um, if they can find an angle where they distract or somehow uh, bamboozle or hypnotize people for the next few months, then they will do it. If that means bringing in someone that's very radical, if that means having some weird show unfold, if that means that we'll see Project Blue Beam uh, play out this, this year, if that means something big during the Olympics in Paris, they will do it. They will do it. So we can have our heads in the sand and pretend none of this matters. Um, however, however, the biggest revelation that we find in all of this is that it is a fake show. That the people who are supposedly in charge are not in charge. That the people who are supposedly running the show are not running the show. That the two-party system is an illusion, that it is a uniparty and always has been working on the same goal, uh, just flavoring it differently. You have Pex Pepsi and you have Coke. Now, if you tell me those are two completely different beverages, it, you, you didn't get it. It's the same thing, just tastes a little different. And, um, and this is becoming more and more obvious by the day. The solution is not to turn away. And I think it was Seneca who said, um, and the problem 